Bro, speaking of breaking out the mold, oh God, I'm about to forget. Can you please give me the genesis of what we <laughs> affectionately refer to as the cameo haircut? The cameo haircut and the red, the red color. Uh, uh, and and the John Paul he, was was the I, that John Paul Gaultier, the, the, the designer. Do you still yeah. have that cup? Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> still How alive. Do you wash that cup. <laughs> still alive. Well. But imagine what it was for me the day of the shooting word up. And and uh, our wardrobe guy had this box he just put up on the counter. I was in line with everyone else to get whatever I was supposed to wear. And I took it in the dress room and said, man, look at what Toys wants me to wear, man. And they was they were like, oh, man, that's great, Black room. Balls out. Let's go for it. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't the day. It wasn't the day for me to say, I'm not wearing that thing. Yeah, you know what I mean? It wasn't the day we were shooting. It was our first day of shooting. Um, we had we had work to do, but there was a time when all of our outfits had cups on them. Uh, we call them the card pieces is what we call them. And uh, Bernard Johnson, God bless him, uh, you know, he was the wardrobe guy in New York. I mean, at the time, you know, you always dreamed and said, man, when we make it, we're definitely going to go to Bernard. And that's what happened. Occasionally, I'll wear it if I feel like it. If I don't, I won't. Um, and, and, and it's OK. Um, you know, the haircut, um, I had a friend girl uh, named um, Tracy Johns. Mm -hmm. She did. She's got to have it with Spike Lee, the very first oh, hit. Oh, yeah, Tracy Camilla Johns, yeah. Yes. yes, that's right. That was a very close friend of mine. And she told me about this, uh, these barbers that immigrated here from Italy um, on uh, south of Houston. Uh, and I told her to take me down. Yeah. And she did. And, um, and you know, I created this, this thing that um, Genesis, I guess, would have been Grace Jones. Um, um, I, and a couple of other things I saw, I made it work. And um, next thing I know, people from Africa is calling and telling me that they have the haircut and others. Um, and I've heard people actually lie about it. Um, um, you know, some some people that you've always considered close. Um, but I figured if it was that important to <laughs> to to uh, to say that be it far for me to dispute that. I, I wouldn't want attention that way. Um, you know what I mean, guys. Right. Okay. <clears throat> this well, is weird because I, I, I'm actually the guy who invented that haircut. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so say what you want, but I'm claiming it. That's funny. <laughs> how, how, how long was it before, like, you, I mean, for you, I, I mean, I guess for you, it's you got to rock it with confidence, but I mean, that was definitely a statement haircut that it, that was an instant street hit. But I mean, at the time, did you feel like, wait a minute, what's, you know, this is the anti Afro. Did you, did you have any idea that you were you know, actually establishing like the black Barbara hood shop? No. You, know what <laughs> it was, you know what it was Q. It was, I had, I was tired of dreads. And I thought it would have been less labor intensive, and actually, it was more. Yeah, I was like, it's more. Yes, it, you know, you you know, you you're twisting and twisting every time. You know, you you're twisting without even realizing that that's what you're doing. And and um, so I wanted to create a haircut that was less labor intensive, and I haven't found it yet. Um, regardless of what style it is, it's going to require attention, um, and. Um, and that's just the way it is. You're not going to escape the uh, black hair curse. 